section of the training course. So we have uh, Mr. Uttam here as the instructor. So uh, whatever questions you have, please type them to the questions tab so that my colleague uh, Uttam will take them. So I'm going to hand over the session to uh, Mr. Uttam. Uh, Uttam, can you please take over? Yes, thanks, Anushka. So let me know if you have any questions. We have around one and a half hours to discuss. Uh, Is one more question that uh, uh, you're interested to uh, modeling uh, biological devices. Uh, uh, there are many simul simulations with respect to bi uh, biomedical, biological applications. Uh, uh, in that case, what I will suggest you to, uh, means we can share you those uh, model files. Uh, I will suggest you to write at support at .com with your brief description of uh, the examples that you are doing uh, and then uh, this would be assigned to a particular application engineer and uh, that particular expert will share you the relevant models uh, which will help you to uh, take forward yeah this one more question on uh, can you explain the heat sink model yeah uh, definitely so uh, what I will do, it is all, already a part of the example library. So if you, uh, I hope uh, you can see my screen now. Yeah, so if you go to the file application library, so if you have go to the file application uh, library and over here, uh, I think this should be available. So if you, if you go to, if you just search for heat sink. So if you're doing a search for the first time, uh, it will take a uh, lot of time. Uh, if you've installed console sometime back, but uh, if you have uh, done this search sometime back, uh, then it will not take you much time. So this is an example already available in console. If you want, you can open the PDF file over here. And uh, once you open the PDF file, you will get to know the uh, step by the, the, the physics setup, uh, inlet outlet and the uh, base surface for the heat sink. And then you have the uh, results part and then the step-by-step -step process to make the whole model. Okay, so if you want, you can also start from uh, this um, documentation. Uh, or you can just open this uh, model file by clicking in open over here. And I, I can just go through briefly what does this heat sink model does. That is the second part of that we only perform the analysis, but not the uh, model building uh, approach. So I have my uh, colleague Nitish, uh, who would be also helping me during the one-on-one -on -one session today and he would be writing to you your uh, uh, answers of your questions some of them i would be take i would be able to take uh, on the go uh, and uh, the rest of the questions would be answered by nitish and if still there are some concerns uh, which we are unable to uh, solve i will uh, suggest you to write at supportedcomsol.com and we will definitely uh, get back to you on on that how do i increase the Font. Okay, oh, I can use the paint. Okay. So if there are still unanswered questions, uh, you can definitely write it as a support at uh, console.com. Okay. okay so where was i so uh, yeah. so once you open this uh, heat sink model you will see again the this is the model builder and in the model builder the process is from top to bottom okay so if i open the component one which is a 3d component you can see that the first is uh, making the geometry over here uh, there's a sequence of making a geometry and uh, i'm not going to go deep into the geometry part uh, i will just go to the material assignment. Uh, the air is given as the cavity material. 
aluminium is the uh, heat sink material and then the silica which is uh, in the bottom part where the uh, lossy domain is uh, attached right so this could be for example that it's connected to led which is giving a lot of losses okay so it's trying to uh, heat this particular uh, domain in the setup of uh, the heat sink uh, and laminar flow, we start with the laminar flow because that is an uh, also an input to the systems. Uh, so in the laminar flow, we have the inlet over here uh, with every velocity of u naught defined uh, in the parameter section. Okay, five meter per five centimeter per second, and I have the outlet somewhere over here. Okay, you cannot see it because uh, it's hidden. So I'll just try to make it view all. So you can see this is the outlet. This is inlet and this is outlet. So this is very simple. We use a laminar flow. We solve for the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. As you can see over here. And that's it. With the heat transfer in solids and fluid, you can see that solids and fluids. So we need to have two material models. First is for solid and second is for fluid. Okay. So for fluid, we select the air domain, the air cavity. For the solid, we select the uh, heat sink as well as the di dielectric uh, in the bottom. Okay, and over here also we need to give in inflow and outflow. Okay, like we did with the uh, flow. Okay, and finally we have the heat source which is connected to the bottom part. Okay, so bottom uh, uh, silica glass is heated uh, with the P naught value. And this P naught has been defined somewhere in the parameter section. Okay, so uh, this is uh, how the model setup is performed, right? And then you go to study and you perform the uh, analysis. Okay, but I'm not going into the uh, post processing results. So I hope that answered your question. This one more question how to assign materials for 2d geometry so assigning the material for 2d geometry is the same as what you do in the 3d geometry that you see right now okay so let me just create a simple 2d geometry so i go to file uh, new i go to model wizard uh, 2d and over here i just uh, try to uh, just click on done uh, or just i can use some acdc I can use the electric uh, electric current interface. Click on add, add study, uh, stationary study, and click on done. Okay. So now I have made a 2D geometry, and over here, what I'm going to do is uh, want to make just two uh, two blocks over here. So I just right click on geometry, and I make my first block. And I just duplicate my first block uh, and shift it uh, in the x direction by one. Okay. Now, if I want to assign the materials, uh, the same thing what I need to do. Just right click on the materials, add material from library. So I can just go to built in and add aluminium. Okay. So aluminium would be assigned to both the domains. I can also have the copper domain and assign it to the right side. Okay. So now you can see that uh, we have the aluminium domain assigned to the left domain and copper on the right side. So this is how you assign the materials for the uh, domains in the uh, uh, 2D geometry.
Yeah. So uh, this one more question on uh, modeling uh, core losses uh, in the transformers. Uh, so we have some examples on that. So if you go to console.com and go to application uh, model and application files over here, if you just search for core losses, uh, transformer, okay. so you can see there are the core losses model. Uh, this is uh, specifically to do with the, the real and imaginary part of uh, the refractive, uh, this uh, permeability and the BH curve and the Joule's, uh, sorry, uh, Jai's Atherton method. So all of them are available. Different kinds of uh, models are available in console. Okay, so I will suggest you to go through this particular model. Uh, I can share this uh, over here. Okay, so go through this model. Uh, and if you still have the concerns regarding this model, yeah, please write to support at console.com. So there's one more question uh, as in uh, there was an issue while importing the geometry given in the assignment. Uh, so let me just try to import that geometry. So uh, if I go to the file new uh, model wizard and I go to 3D, okay. And uh, I go to, I just add electric currents and I use stationary study. And over here, I try to import my geometry. Okay, so I just right click on the geometry and import my geometry. And uh, I have it somewhere over here. This is my geometry. Let's import my geometry. Yeah, so what it says that it requires a CAD kernel. Okay, so now uh, for this, you need to just go to the geometry one and change this uh, geometry representation from console to CAD kernel. Okay, and then you just try to import again. And this should be able to uh, give you this import, uh, this particular geometry. Okay, uh, and also note that this is a 3D uh, component. Okay, so if you have a 2D component, and then you try to uh, import this. If you try to import using uh, this, uh, then it will tell you cannot import three geometry in a two, two D sequence. Okay, so just try to make the geometry uh, uh, geometric representation as CAD kernel, and then try to import it again. Okay. Yeah, so if you're interested to model uh, super capacitors is one of the question. Uh, the ACDC module would be good to go ahead with. If ACDC module uh, evaluates all, all the uh, capacitance, uh, inductance, resistance, and uh, uh, all the low frequency applications. Thank you. 
Yes, so uh, if the uh, CAD import module is not available, then uh, yeah, you will not be able to import that geometry. Uh, so in that case, what I will recommend is uh, uh, one of the solution is to, uh, uh, means we, uh, you might be getting, you would have received the trial license. So through the trial license, you can install all the modules and specifically you will require all the modules because uh, uh, as day progresses, uh, you would also be having uh, CAD, that is CAD geometry, uh, uh, making how to make geometries uh, in the console. Uh, that will also require CAD uh, module, CAD uh, interface module, so uh, CAD import module. So uh, what I suggest is that uh, the trial license are already given to you. So can go ahead and install uh, the, from the trial license. Yeah, so we uh, we also have uh, uh, seen that uh, the username and password uh, is not working for some of you guys. So I will request you to write at support@console.com uh, with this concern. Uh, we will then look look into it. And if you still uh, are unable to upload the assignment, uh, you can definitely write at support@console.com with your uh, uh, any concerns that you have, and then we will try to help you guys uh, take it forward. Yeah, so one of the question is uh, if you, I, I just tried to select the copper uh, material, but uh, copper and the nylon material, but the options for these materials are many. Yeah, so exactly. So uh, the concern is that uh, if you right click on the materials, add material from a library, uh, you will see that in the, uh, in the built-in, you have the copper and the nylon both available. So, so you don't need to actually go and search for them in this, if you search for, for them, there would be many uh, types or uh, different types of uh, uh, copper material that would be available within the library. So all of them will show up. Instead of that, you can just go to in the built-in and you can just go to the add copper and you can add the nylon material. Okay. And once you add the nylon material, also you need to add the uh, conductivity of the nylon. Yeah, so if, uh, if you have uh, not only all the modules, uh, you can just reinstall it. So once you have the trial license link with you, uh, if you are still not having the trial license, uh, please let us know uh, on uh, supportedcouncil.com so we can issue the trial license. And once you have the trial license, uh, you can reinstall uh, Comsol. Okay. And once you go and have the reinstallation, in that you can enable all the modules, and then uh, it, the course would be like very smooth, so that you don't to uh, have an issue with any of the modules not required.
Yeah, so there's one more question on uh, how to evaluate the uh, maximum temperature, uh, that is the hot spot in the model. Uh, so what I will do, uh, I will just uh, try to open that particular uh, heat sink model. Okay, so this is a heat sink model. And over here, instead of P0 as uh, one ampere, I just try to give it as around 20 watts. Okay, and I just try to run this model. Okay, this model will take some time. So yeah, uh, this will take around a minute or so to compute. Uh, Till then I will try to, uh, so the question is how to evaluate the maximum uh, temperature that is the hot spot uh, in this heat sink. Yeah, so there are many uh, questions on the assignment. Uh, so what I will do, I will just try to uh, set up the model. Okay, for the assignment. So once I set up the geometry, okay, the next part is to uh, assign the materials. So uh, let me also yeah. So let me just right click on the materials, add material from uh, library. So I just go to built in and I go for copper domain first. Okay, and uh, then I just go ahead with the nylon material. Okay. In the case of nylon material, I assign it to the outer domains uh, like this. Okay. One more important thing uh, is uh, to notice that in the geometry, okay, in the geometry, you need to convert your length unit from uh, meter to mm. If you don't do this, uh, your results uh, might not be coming uh, accurately. Okay. So please do this without fail, right? So change the length unit of the geometry from meter to mm, okay? So we have copper. So if I just enable my wireframe rendering, I have copper in the center, and then we have nylon uh, surround, being surrounded, uh, uh, surrounding the inner copper material, okay? Uh, let me open this model, the solution model, so I just remember what is the problem setup. So in this case, uh, if you remember the conductivity of the nylon was uh, set as, uh, how much? So let me just check. Or I can just open that particular PDF document. So let me just open that uh, document. Yeah, so let's try to open my assignment problem. Okay, so here you can see that uh, the conductivity is around 0 0.001 Siemens per meter. So I just go and in the nylon, I write it as 0 0.01 Siemens per meter. Okay, so I assign copper in the center and nylon uh, on the outer domains with uh, 0 0.01 Siemens per meter, okay. The next point is to apply the current. Uh, the current that we need to apply is around uh, 2.5 amperes. Okay, so I need to apply the current over here and ground over here. So to apply the current, I just right click on electric currents. I just apply it over here, electric uh, terminal condition over here. Okay, and assign it to this uh, inner uh, copper cable material over here. Okay. And then I just write uh, over here, I write it as 2.5 amp. Okay. Uh, on the other side, I just need to apply the ground. So I just right click on the electric currents and I just click on the ground and select the other side. 
Okay, looks good. So I have set up the current on the left side and on the right side, I have applied the ground. Then it's always good to just go to compute and see that you're able to get the correct uh, intuitive results or not. Okay. So I have computed my results and this is only for the electrical current interface as of now. And uh, the next part is the heat transfer part. So I just go to the physics, add physics, and I go to heat transfer, heat transfer in, just double click on heat transfer in solids. And over here, let us see uh, what they're asking for. They're asking for, uh, so the copper cable, the power cable is getting convected, cooled, cooled due to the environment with the heat transfer coefficient of 10. Okay, so how do I do that? Uh, just right click on the heat transfer and solid, and I apply um, heat flux boundary condition. Okay, so I apply it on the outer surfaces like this. Okay, so I applied this uh, heat flux that is convectively cooled uh, boundary condition on the heat as, as, as a heat flux. And I give a convective heat flux with a heat transfer coefficient of 10. Okay. And that's it in the heat transfer part. Nothing else needs to be done, right? Let me just check it. Uh, setting up of heat transfer, electric currents, multiple problem. That was good. So next is to evaluate the volume average of the insulator, volume average temperature of the insulator and volume maximum temperature of the cable core. Okay, so let us do that. <clears throat> so after, so I will just use my study one. Uh, so can you tell me what I'm forgetting in guess? Yeah, so I'm forgetting the multi-physics part. So just right click on the multi-physics. I add electromagnetic heating. Okay. And this couples my problem now from the electric currents uh, to the heat transfer part. Okay. So I just uh, then go to my study one. You see that all of them are tick marked over here. And then I click on compute. Okay, uh, so now if you do like this, uh, what you will see that only the electric potential plot is coming because we have first computed the electric currents and then added the heat transfer. So if you want the, the um, temperature plot to also come, so just right click on solver configuration, delete configuration and delete uh, all the configuration, right? Just write yes, yes. And then you just go to the study one again and compute. In this case, you will just not see the electric potential, but also the rising temperature. Okay, so you see the electric potential plot and the temperature plot also. Okay. Now the question is to evaluate the average temperature, volume average temperature of the insulated domain. Okay, so how do I do that? I just need to right click on the derived values, go to average and volume average. Okay, on the volume average, I just need to add the outer domains like this. Okay, and just click on evaluate. Okay, 